good evening, everyone. And so it's so good to be with you all this evening, and so good also to see so many familiar names in the in the participants um, column, and to see that a hundred people have signed in to hear how to work with their children. Praise the Lord for that. I'm so excited to share with you in the, the information. And um, I've put into the chat the link to our YouTube page, the Preparation Ministry. You can just check in the chat. The link is there to our YouTube channel, and you can go and subscribe. We upload videos weekly to our YouTube channel. So this evening we're talking about a fascinating subject, and I just need to set up my sharing so that... The PowerPoint. I uh, just need to. I like to share only a portion of the screen so I can see some other things too that I need to see. So now I just put it up so you all can see it properly. You all can see the slide? You can see the thumbs up? You can see the slide? No thumbs up. Brenda Lee, can you see the PowerPoint clearly? Sorry, yes, Renier, we can see it clearly. Thank you. Okay, fantastic. So yeah, as Brenda Lee said, we met when I would just became a Christian, and she taught me how to live a healthy lifestyle. So I praise the Lord for that because I'm still practicing it today, 15 years later. Praise the Lord for that. So <laughs> so good to, to work with her again and to be involved in some form of ministry with her and this time to talk about your, your child's personality and understanding it i first want to introduce you to my beautiful family that's my beautiful wife chantelle and my queen and there you have my two boys the eldest is jonathan and the youngest one is matthew jonathan james and matthew levi so god has really blessed me with a wonderful family and we do ministry together everywhere we travel they go with me i don't travel on my own and i've already seen how god used my eldest son in our last meetings last month when we traveled to a church called wentworth in durban we did the personality seminar for the weekend there and my son connected with a couple and i thought this couple was part of the church but they weren't they actually came to the seminar from outside that do not believe the same things that we do and my son connected with them and he even gave them a card that he made out of his own he made the card and he gave them the card and on the card he wrote he wrote down his latest memory text which was in the gospel of matthew watch for you do not know the hour of jesus coming i said praise the lord out of his own we did not tell him to do this this is what he did so God is already using my boy to touch people's lives and to reach the lost, which I believe is vitally important. So I'm going to share with you this evening some of the things that I have learned in the last four years and that I've shared extensively with churches from all over South Africa and from people around the world doing Zoom meetings like this and people joining from around the world. So firstly, a background. Jude, why am I sharing this? Why am I sharing this? So a couple of years back, my wife and I would have some of these disagreements that I did not understand. We both in the faith, we both doing God's work. So what in the world's going on? Why are we having these disagreements? I just don't understand it. And God reminded me of a gentleman that introduced me to the four personalities a couple of years back when we did a seminar in East London. At first, I thought it was interesting, but I didn't go deeper into the subject. As I started praying about this personality thing, as my wife and I are having these once-off disagreements, we are excellent together, but it's just these disagreements every now and then that I didn't understand. The Lord led me back to that and said, go and study that. And when I studied it, I saw, oh, now I understand. We are clashing because we've got different personalities. And nothing is ever going to change that because I have done the research. I have a, a, a research scientist that done the research for me, a friend of mine. And it's been proven that your personality is in your genes, meaning you got it from your parents. Your parents got it from their parents, meaning we got it from Adam and Eve. 
And Adam is called the son of God in the gospel of Luke. So we received it from God. The four living creatures around the throne of God actually represents the four personalities that makes up who God is. It's a fascinating study. So I then went and studied the Bible and I saw that the Bible is saturated with this stuff. And that became my passion because our ministry is all about preparing people for the end. And what more than actually telling you exactly who you are and where God will work in your life, what your weaknesses are, which he wants to give you the victory over, and he wants to sanctify our strengths. That is the preparation for the end of time. It can't get more detailed than that. So that was my passion. That was my study. And then one morning while I was studying early in the morning, the Lord impressed my mind that he only changed names four times in the Bible. Now, when God changes a name, it means it's a character development. It's a character that is prepared for heaven. And when I said only four times, because there are only four personalities, I said, no way, this can't be. I went and studied those four personalities whose names were changed. And lo and behold, each of them represent a personality and God worked in the very area that speaks to that personality. Fascinating. I've got it available on DVD. It's available online. You can get it from our ministry afterwards. So, so that's what I did. I, I studied, I studied the four name changes and now we get to parenting. And when it comes to parenting, it is not one shoe fits all. If we look at the four name changes in the Bible, which God our Father did, He actually worked with each one of them based upon their personality. He did not have the same thing for all four, the same standard he offered for all four, and that's the law of God. But the way He worked with them was in regards to their personality. And that's the fascinating thing. So that's what we're going to study this evening. This, this, is, going to, this is going to be fascinating. And I believe you're going to learn a lot. So there are four personalities. You have the reds, the fiery reds, the sunshine yellows, the cool blues, and the earth greens. Now my personality, so everyone's got a strong one and then a secondary one. Everyone, I've done it in front of many audiences, many churches. The, the requests to come to churches are still piling into our ministry so we can go and travel and present it at the churches because it's so much fun to do it in front of the audience and connect with the people. And so I've, it's throughout, it's the same. Everyone's got a strong one and the secondary one. And when I explain the personalities, everyone say, yes, that's me. That's exactly who I am. Actually, a couple of weeks back when we went went with church, the one lady in the audience said, I feel exposed. And I said, exactly. God wants to tell us who we are and what he wants to do in our life. So these are the four personalities. And everyone's got a strong one and a secondary one. So I am a fiery red. And then my second personality is the sunshine yellow. So I always will have a joke here and there when, when I do these personalities, because that's what the yellow personality, that's who they are. They're the fun people of this world. And then you have the cool blues and the green. So my wife, Chantel, she's the cool blue. And then a secondary personality is the green. According to the experts, my wife and I, we are incompatible because the reds and the blues, they struggle to get along unless Jesus is in charge then they can get along, especially when they understand each other. And that's why I have to go and study these things. So in the marriage setting, the reds marry the greens and the yellows marry the blues. But in my case, God gave me a blue and God gave my wife a red and I wouldn't want it any other way. God knew exactly what he did. So let's get to my boys. My boys, my eldest son, Jonathan, he's got mommy's blue personality. And that's the one that made the card. That's the personality that made the card and wrote down that text for the people that he was connecting with. Then his second personality is he's a red. My son always wants to win. When he runs, he wants to win. If he doesn't win, he's upset. Now I understand him because I understand his personality. And this is the fascinating thing about this. You can actually understand your child's personality and why they do the things that they do. My second son, Matthew, has got the yellow and the red. So he's more like daddy, but the yellow is very strong. So he's always got a joke to make. He's always got something fun to do. He always makes things light. He always messes when he eats. He does all these things because he's a yellow personality. Now I understand him. So I know where to guide him. He's the one that when I say pack away your clothing into the cupboard, Jonathan would fold it perfectly absolutely perfectly six years old and he will put it into the cupboard right in his place and his cupboard is perfect 
Then I go to Matthew's cupboard. He's four years old. I open up his cupboard and there's his nighties just lying there on top of each other. He didn't fold it up. So now I can either be, you know, very commanding and like, oh, you need to do this because I said A and B and C. Or I can understand his personality and actually go to him and say, my son. And this is the type of personality you need to go down and look them in the eye and say, my son, I've asked you to fold it up. Please take it out and do that. And then he would willingly do it. But because I understand his personality, I approach them differently. So these are the four personalities. The reds, the yellows, the blues, and the greens. I like the colors. You know, the, the psychologists would use the words, the melancholics, the sanguines, the cholerics, and the phlegmatics. So for those of you that don't know, the reds are the cholerics, the yellows are the sanguines, the blues are the melancholics, and the greens are the phlegmatics. But I prefer the colors. I prefer to use the colors. So... If you look just at your yard care, when it comes to your child's personality, how they, if you are giving them chores in the yard, their personality will actually dictate how they approach their yard care. The green personality, these are the green finger type of people. Man, they love the garden. For them, it's peaceful and quiet, and that's where they want to be. The blue personalities, if they do something in the yard that they want to do it themselves because they do it perfectly, and that's, it's only their mind that has the perfect mind. So that's how they're going to do it. If it's the yellow child, he's going to start doing it. Then he's going to be bored. He's going to want to do something else. And the red child, <laughs> he's just going to say, Mommy, Daddy, can't you pay a gardener to do it? I've got more important work to do in this life. <laughs> so this is how children will approach it. How would your child approach their study habits? The red personalities, these are the type of personalities. They study the day before the exam. And once they get into their exam, they still do well, even though they studied a day before, because they're brilliant under high-pressure situations. The blue personalities, these are your prepared people. So your child that is a blue would study for weeks before the time. And you would think your one child is maybe a blue and your other child is a red, and you're thinking the one is in front of the books and the other one isn't. Now, I'm not, okay, let me put a disclaimer out there. When I explain the personalities, it doesn't mean everything that I say when I explain them is right. We are trying to guide the children and to understand them. I hope that you're following me. So you might not see the red in front of the books. It doesn't mean it's right. But they've got the confidence and they are good under high pressure situations to still do well in the exam. It doesn't mean they mustn't study before the time and you can't guide them in that way. But now you know how they approach it. So then you guide them in that way. The blue personality, as I said, they are extremely prepared children. They will be prepared. These are the cum laude students. Like my wife, Chantel, she received cum laude at college because she's extremely prepared for what she does. Then the green personalities. Now, this child you need to guide because they've got a desire to study. They really want to study. But they get so distracted with everything around them that by the time the exam comes, then they are freaking out because they didn't study and then they need to go through the night to study to be prepared for the exam. Because they will have the book in front of them. Oh, I'm going to study. I'm going to study. And then they're like, oh, I like this. Let's, let's read this book. Well, let's do this. And they get distracted. The yellow personality child, they want to study after the exam. So you really need to guide them. You actually need to take their hand so that they can study because they don't want to study. They hate analytics they hate spreadsheets they hate books they want to go out and be with people and that's why you can guide them then your eating habits is dependent upon your personality the red personality child he would eat fast because he needs to go to school or he needs to do whatever he needs to do next the blue personality child they would be very thorough in the eating as in they will chew the how many times they say you need to chew they will look at what they eat at how much they eat if they want to do it right, but they can also be emotional eaters. So especially the girls, they can be emotional and then they they overeat and they don't look after their weight. And then you've got the green personality eaters. They are the slow eaters of this world. You really need to, you know, we are going to be late for church. Please hurry up. They're extremely slow when they eat. And then you've got the yellow personality eaters. They love to eat. It's their favorite thing to do in this world. They absolutely love to eat because it's a social event. They love food. So my youngest son, he would ask myself and my wife every afternoon when he goes down for his nap, he would ask, what are we eating for lunch? 
And if I didn't tell him what we're going to eat, he would ask me afterwards again. He would call me actually and say, so daddy, because I work from home, what are we going to eat? He wants to know because for him, it's a social event. So that's just an example of how each of the child would approach these type of things. So let's get to the red personalities. So let's just in brief summarize who are the fiery reds. So the fiery reds, their slogan in life is just do it. For them, it's the Nike, you know, just do it. Don't think about it. Don't go through it in your mind. Just do it. And that gets them into trouble many times. But these are also the go getters of this world. So this child, they actually want to have control over something because their desire in life is to have control. So you need to give them that opportunity to control something. You need them to give them the opportunity to have be in charge of something or the garden is your work or something. And you can decide the way you want it or at least one patch of the garden or whatever it is. But they want to have control in life. These are extroverts, so they like to be around people and they are conflict seeking, meaning they've got no problem with conflict. These type of child, children, they will back chat you. They will tell you, hey, but you did this, 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 this. So you really need to work on that side of their character. Their greatest need in life is to be appreciated. They want to be credited for what they do. Now, the problem is that many times because these children want to be in control and they are very strong type of personalities, people don't want to appreciate them. They don't want to give them credit for what they actually do right, especially the work that they do. But that is what they need. And your child will blossom if you do this for them. These children also know that they are right. <laughs> so you can't get in the argument with them. It's, you shouldn't get in the argument with your children. But the point is, they know they're right. And that's something you need to guide. Their greatest fear in life is the loss of control. So they don't want to lose control over things. And therefore, they will many times fight for that thing. They are not emotional children. So they're not going to walk around necessarily and crying about everything because they're not emotional. They right brain uh, people. All reds are right brain, meaning they are not emotional. Emotions is not high on the list. The reds and the yellows, not emotional. The blues and the greens, extremely emotional children. They are very organized and goal orientated. They're always busy. So this child is always doing something, always want to do something. They don't want to sit still. They're also leaders. So if you ever see children playing around, there are four or five children together, then the red would be the leader. He would decide or she would decide, both male and female, doesn't matter the gender. They will decide what are they going to play. They will convince everyone else to play what they want to play. And I can see it with our church children when they play together. There's this one girl, she's a strong red. And I can see she's always in front. Everyone's always running after her. What does she decide? What does she want to do? And that's exactly the personality. They want to be the leaders. And you're going to see as they grow up, it's going to be the same thing right into adulthood. It's not going to change. One of the challenges with the red personality is that they always want to win. So I can see it in my eldest son when we, so I like to take my boys to play golf on a Monday so that my wife can have some time on her own because on a Monday I do counseling, I do Bible studies and everything else in the evening. So I work from the afternoon into the evening. So in the morning, my sons and I, we go and play golf. The golf course gave us a special because I'm in ministry. So I can take my boys there and we have fun. So what we do then is after I've done my putting, I have to go back to the cart. And then my eldest son would always ask, Daddy, let's run because he loves to run. And I'm like, okay, let's run. And as soon as we start running and he loses, because many times I let him win, obviously, but as soon as he loses, he doesn't like it. And then I have to guide his mind. I have to tell him, my son, you don't always have to win. And if someone else wins, praise them in a healthy Christian way. Like say, well done, daddy. This time you got me. And next time I let you win and I will say, well done, Jonathan, you beat me this time. So this in this way, I'm guiding his wanting to win. I'm not going to change that, but I can guide it into Christianity. Under tension. Now, this is the greatest evidence that when this personality is not surrendered to Jesus is unattention. They will dictate 
they will start to assert. They want to put down their authority. And that is evidence that Jesus is not in the heart. And at that moment, you need to guide your child. And we see, I see it in adults too. As soon as someone becomes dictative and assertive, I'm going to tell you, Jesus is not in the heart. I can see it in myself. If I do that with my wife, I know Jesus is not in my heart. They are very strong world children. So it feels like you really struggle with them because you're saying A, B, and C, but they're not obeying A, B, and C. So they're extremely strong world because they are self-reliant. They're extremely self-confident. They're very dominant. They're decisive. They make choices quickly. And they're extremely confident people. Some of their negatives, and this is just a summary, there's much more to this. And I'm going to tell you at the end of this seminar how you can get access to it. The other problem, the, one of the problems with them is they can be very aggressive when they're upset. They get very impatient when you're slow and you're not, you're not in, in, you know, fast enough according to their liking. They can be very, very rude and bossy, very insensitive because they're not emotional. So say, they, they just say things and you think, oh, how did you, you, did you just say that? They can be very defensive during arguments. And that was one of my problems that my wife would say something and then I say, but you do that. And then she says this, and then I say, but you do that? So the Reds can be very defensive. And they've got short attention spans. So studying for a long time doesn't work for them. Doesn't mean it shouldn't happen. It just means they've got short attention spans, and you need to guide the child in that area. If I were to give a, a, a red child a vehicle, it would be a bulldozer. They bulldoze everyone. It doesn't matter who it is. Is it right? No. They need Jesus in their heart so that that bulldozer can calm down. Now, by a thumbs up, who can say that they, they can see their child as a red? Just a thumbs up. Just give a thumbs up in Zoom. Just go down to the way or up. And you can then click on a thumbs up. So Alphonse says it. Tandila says she sees her child as a red. Anyone else? There I see Nikitzi. Patsimo Tafa, if I don't pronounce your name correctly, then please forgive me. Any other reds? Sorry, it takes a while to go through. Charlene says she sees a red. And Lisa, I'm trying to get through the file of 200 people. Gail says it. And if quite a few others says that they see their children as a red. Okay. Lizzie, Lizzie, you got your hand up. Is that a question or are you saying, yes, that's me too? I see in the chats also, many people are saying, I see my children as a red. Okay, or my child, my child. Okay, so let's get to the sunshine yellows. For them, life is all about having fun. And I can see it in my youngest. We will sit at table and he will make faces. He would make a joke. My wife would make a video for someone's birthday. And then my sons love to sing and then play an instrument. So they will sing and play an instrument, singing happy birthday to that person. And Matthew would be the fun one, making jokes and making it fun. This is, let's not be too serious. For their desire in life is to have fun. Fun for them is very important. For they are fun people. These are the center of attention type of people. Uh, people love to be around them. I can see how many of the adults are so attracted to my youngest son because he's a yellow. So they, they would say, oh, I like Matthew. Because Matthew is the, he's also a yellow. That means he's also affectionate. So he's the one that's fun and he sits on your lap. Now, everyone likes a child who wants to come and sit on your lap. And he's attracted to women because yellows are more attracted to what women look like. So he likes, I told one guy in our church, if your wife was any younger, he would marry your wife. And if she did, wasn't married to you. Because I can see my sons always asking, where is Auntie Irene? Oh, I love Auntie Irene. I like Auntie Irene. Obviously, we're guiding it. But he's just attracted to that because he's a very fun person. They are the extreme extroverts of this world. For them, staying at home, doing nothing is the most boring thing in this world. They, they hate to be bored. They don't like routine. They want to have fun and go outside and do something. So if your child is a yellow, you can't just do indoor activities. 
You need to get your child outside and do something fun with them. And you need to do it with them, not just their friends. You need to go out and be fun with them. For them, like five, level five lockdown is a nightmare to them. That's like, president, please don't make it five weeks. Slow down. We need to have fun. For the blue and the green personalities, the five weeks of lock, level five lockdown we had was too short. For them, it's like, no, let's make it longer. <laughs> let's just stay at home, be calm, be chilled. No issues. Let's not go out there. Let's just stay right here. They are conflict avoiding children. So if you are going to be aggressive, upset, etc., they are going to avoid the conflict. They are not going to want to enter into conflict. They're not going to want to enter into anything. They are just going to pull back. They are, I'm going to talk more about how they respond to discipline just now. I'm just trying to summarize all four personalities. They are talkers, so they don't stop talking. Sometimes when we drive to church, we drive an hour to church. And I sit in the backy and my son would start talking. And I'm like, isn't there a time to just not talk? Because I, when I drive, I like to be silent and just sit there, think about ministry, think about new plans. I'm going to tell you some of our new plans at the end of the seminar. Think about, you know, many things in life. He just wants to talk. When we sit at the breakfast table, lunch, he wants to talk. He just likes to talk all the time. They can be very loud. So when they talk, it's not just to you, it's to everyone in the neighborhood. They can talk very loud. They seek a lot of attention and affection for their greatest need is admiration and affection. So they need a lot of hugs. They need a lot of attention. Now, if you understand your child being a yellow, you can misinterpret their crying for affection because they literally will go out into crying as, oh, why are you crying now? Why are you doing this? Stop crying. And we can uh, uh, reprimand our children when all they are screaming out because they can't articulate into words they're too young they all they're saying is you know what i just need a hug there are sometimes that the day's been too long we've been at church we've had a potluck lunch we've done an outreach now we're driving an hour back to home i put my son into bed or my wife puts my son into bed and then suddenly he starts crying for no reason now either i can tell him hey i'm telling you you need to go to sleep la, 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 la. Or I've learned, all I do is I pick him up, or my wife would pick him up, let his head drop on our shoulder, sway him back and forth for two minutes, and just say, Daddy loves you. And I put him back in his bed, crying, gone. Why? He needs the affection. He, that's what they need. So they like, he likes to, when there's prayer meeting, our church has got five prayer meetings, and I run one of them. So I would be in my office, right here in this office, and I would be running one prayer meeting and my wife would be a part of another prayer meeting with my boys in our bedroom. The one boy will sit on his, Jonathan will sit on his own and he would be writing down the text. He would be listening what the pastor says, etc. or the, the elder. And then Matthew would sit there and he would have his foot on Chantal's lap wanting a foot massage. <laughs> he wants affection. He wants to touch. He wants to be on mommy's lap. He wants to be close to her. They also want admiration. So when these children do something, acknowledge it. When they're riding on their bicycle and they say, Daddy, look, clap hands and look at them and say, wonderful, my child. When I, if I had the time, I would show you the name change in the Bible that God did, the yellow personality, how the very name change was God showing admiration for that person. Absolutely fascinating. But that's a, a talk on its own. The thing they fear most in life is the loss of prestige. They exude charm. They can charm people around their finger. You know, if it was an adult, you know, if it comes to the marriage setting, the, the, the male yellow personality is so charming and so full of confidence. They believe their charm when they walk past a statue that even the statue will turn its head. That's how confident they are in their charm. They have friends everywhere, the yellow personalities. They just love to have friends. And they're also not emotional children. They don't have emotions. They would cry because they need affection, but they're not emotional in the sense of emotion. They enjoy people. They love to be around people. Like when we travel and we do ministry, we've gone for four or five days. We come back, my wife and I, we are done for, with people for at least a day or two before we can just, so that we can recover. My yellow personality son, he's just like the next day we can have people over again. Doesn't matter. They don't like analytics. They need interaction. 
under tension they will be at attacking and that word should be behind that boy there so Sar sarcastic that is evidence that jesus is not in the heart when they become attacking and sarcastic they love to eat they are easily bored and they don't like routine so you need to guide them in routine and help them continually they've got natural talent and ability these children can pick up an instrument or open their mouth and sing and you would say you had no training and you are able to do this they are very spontaneous very open <laughs> like i'm my wife's turning 40 this year praise the lord you saw how beautiful she is at the age of 40 and I had a plan. God impressed me what I need to do. And I, I sent a message to family members of her, at least her mom and her sister, to come fly up to, to KwaZulu Natal. And we're going to have a wonderful weekend together. Her birthday is on the day we go to church. So it's just going to be wonderful. And I had this plan, but I had to speak to my boys too, because there's something else that I planned. And I, I spoke to my boys, but I said to them, it is a secret. But for Matthew, it is public news so it wasn't long and mommy knew so i was like oh there goes the surprise now blue personalities don't like surprises but i at least wanted to extend it to closer to the time than months before the time they're extremely open they love to help others they always have new ideas these are the dreamers because of the new ideas and they've got trouble being alone they've got short attention spans the shortest of all four personalities so they're the hardest to teach they struggle the most at school, the yellow personalities, the pure yellows. I obviously explain it in their purest form. If they've got blue as their second, it could help them in their studies. They also are very impulsive. They don't think what they do. Yeah, so many times my son just does something and I'm like, D you didn't even think it through. You just did it. No, daddy has also done that in the past. But the point is now I need to guide my son not to do that. They also lie easily. And this is what I see in my younger son. And I had to guide him. And this, and when it comes to lying, there is no... How, how can I put this? Let me get to the discipline part. Then I'll, I'll explain that. Because they lie easily. They manipulate easily. They are extremely untidy. Their rooms are always the dirty ones. Always got stuff underneath the bed thrown. that are not packed away. And you continually have to guide them to say, No, this is what we expect of you. This is what you need to do. And they blame others for their problems. They're never, never the problem. If I were to give them a vehicle, it's a jet plane. Fast and fun. Okay. Any person in this audience this evening that would say, you know what, yellow personality, that's that's my child. Thumbs up. If a yellow personality, you can do it in the chat. Just put a thumbs up. If a yellow personality is your child. Philililia is A12. I see there's a thumbs up. Amaratia, here are some difficult names to pronounce. Vandana says, yes, that's my child. Lorna says, that's my child. The yellow person says, so, so they're the light, they're the sunshine in your home. Joan says, that's my child. Matesh, Patel, oh, pastor. It's good to see the pastor from, we're actually going to your church next month to present the seminar there. Praise the Lord. Good to see you here. Stephanie says, that's my child. Jalisa Carmen Smithwick. Is that Glenn's wife? Glenn Smithwick's wife? Or daughter? Or anything close to Glenn Smithwick? I miss Glenn. Haven't seen him for years. Diana, my second son. Okay, wonderful. Quite a few of you saying that's my child. So let's get to the blue personality. The cool blues. In their mind, there's only one way in, a, in accomplishing anything that, in this life. And that's to do it right. If we can't do it right, we're not going to do it. For the yellow is, we need to have fun while we do something. For the reds, for them is, just do it. Do it now. For the blues, it needs to be done right. The process is extremely important. For their desire in life is to have perfection. So these are the ones I've seen my son... So, so they've got cokies that they color in with, and then they've got crayons. And I've seen my son, my eldest son, Jonathan, has got the blue in him, his mom's blue. He would take the blue cokie and put the blue crayon, like perfectly aligned together. And so he would do with all the colors. And his cars are parked in the correct sense. His cupboard is perfectly done. You know, everything packed in its order. Everything needs to be perfect. They are introverts. The, the blue personalities. So they are not the type of children that's just going to want 
people all the time. Now, my eldest son also got red, so he got no problem with people. But the true blues, they are introverts. They are also conflict-seeking, meaning they've got no problem with conflict. And these children especially have no problem when you have done something wrong. They like to point out faults. And I see in the adults, it's the same thing. They are extremely critical people. So they've got no problem with conflict. The thing they fear most in life is embarrassment. They don't want to embarrass, be embarrassed. So at our last seminar at Wentworth Church, when I, uh, I introduced my family and I explained each of the personalities, which of my family members has the personality. When I mentioned Jonathan, he put his book that he makes his notes in. So he'll make notes while I'm preaching about my, he can actually do the personalities almost himself now. And he would put the book in front of his face, like daddy just mentioned me in front of all the people. So for him, that's embarrassing. He doesn't want to be embarrassed. Their greatest need in life is to be acknowledged and they need companionship. Now, once again, what they need the most in life, people don't want to give. They need to be acknowledged, but they continually tell you what you do wrong or what they need in life. And they're very expressive. And then people are like, you know what, I'm not going to acknowledge that because I'm actually empowering you in doing it more. But it's actually the opposite effect. When I acknowledge, I actually empower them to feel fulfilled and live a happy life. But because they can be critical, because they point out faults, people don't want to acknowledge them. You know, think of Joseph in the Bible. When his brothers did something wrong, he went to daddy saying, brothers are doing something wrong. What did his brothers do? Acknowledge our brother? No, they threw him into a pit. They also need companionship. For them, it's vitally important to have that one important friend. That one important person. For my elder son, Jonathan, it is daddy. He just wants daddy. If, if daddy's done with work during the day, done with ministry work, he comes and he asks, so what are we going to do, daddy? He wants to know because I set out time most of the days during the week for them. Some days, like on a Thursday, we need to go and do shopping. Then we don't do that time together. But the other days of the week, we are having time together. And then my eldest son would always ask, so daddy, what are we going to do together? Because I'm his companion. And that's very important to them. They need, so if you've got a blue child, you need to set out time to go and sit next to them and just be with them. You don't have to touch them. You can let them talk. But ask them what they would like to do. Whatever it is, just, this is what they need. Just be with them. That's all they need. They are the most misunderstood children in the world. If you've got a blue child and you're a red personality parent, you know how much you are struggling. Because I, have, I know many blue personality adults, my wife is one of them, who struggles with their parents. My wife struggled with her father because her father was a red blue. And I know no many other people that have struggled immensely with their parents because the parent was either a red or a green and then they have blue in them. They're expressing their need. They're expressing what they want. They are critical they, and then the parent just shut them off because you're finding fault unnecessary, etc. And this, if you're a parent, if you're a red and your child is a blue, you need to be very sensitive to what they are saying and what they are expressing. And don't just cut them off. Don't just say, oh, you just want to fight. You just want to find fault. Listen to what they are saying. Many times it's just because they don't have the companionship that they are complaining. But if we give them that, if we acknowledge them and everything else in this life, you don't have to experience the bad side of the relationship. And if you read the Bible, the Bible says there are four types of people. And when it explains the blue person, Solomon said there are four types of people. I shared in the other seminar that I do. And then when he explains the blue personality, he actually says when they are far away from God, they curse their parents. They turn on their parents. They ostracize their parents. And that's not what the Bible says. And I've seen it in my mom. My wife's got an amazing testimony of how she struggled with her dad. And she wanted to push him away because the natural thing for a blue personality, which is evidence that Jesus is not in the heart, is to withdraw. They withdraw. Oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm, I'm going to withdraw from you. And then they actually don't give God the opportunity to do something amazing. And my wife cho chose not to do that, not to withdraw. And then God did an amazing miracle. Even in her dad's death, the day that he died, 
something amazing happened, which I don't have the time to explain. But it's because she gave him the opportunity. She gave him the benefit of the doubt because he started to understand his personality. And this is part of what the personality, understand the personality does. It sets you free to have patience with other people. To actually say, you know what? I understand. Doesn't mean it's right. Doesn't mean I have to be abused or anything like that. But I can understand. So they are very misunderstood, the blue children. They are very sensitive children. So you might say something and think it wasn't something to be hurt by, but then they are offended. Or they, if, it, they are, if it's a boy, he's offended. If it's a girl, he's, she's hurt. And then they would tell you, and you're like, but I did nothing. But to them, it was something. They're extremely correct and thorough in what they do. You should see my eldest son when he colors in, when he's, he's starting to write, obviously, because he's six years old. We're doing homeschooling. So when he writes, when he does his maths, everything that he does is per perfect, correct, and thorough. They need silence. So they need time to process. So sometimes they just need to be silent. They're extremely organized and analytical. So my eldest son's got a lot of questions about everything. If an ambulance goes by when we drive, he would ask, so why is the ambulance going past us? And I'm like, my son, I don't know. But he wants to understand because they ask questions about asking questions. They're actually building the puzzle in their mind. And the more the puzzle is built, then they understand. But they need to ask questions. They are afraid of no one understanding how they really feel. They don't like making a mistake and having to compromise standards. So when <laughs> this is funny. So we had to, we went to Cape Town in March this year to go and preach the personality seminar in Cape Town at two different churches. That Afrikaans church in Paro and then I wait, which was the other church? It was the English church. So we did the seminar there and on our way there, we like to sleep over at the Harib Dam. It's almost halfway, but there's a place, and I'm actually promoting this place. It's called the Raptor Reach Lodge. It's very cheap, and it's outside of the Harib Dam, but you look onto the dam when you walk out of the door of your room where you sleep. So, and it's extremely quiet. It's on solar, so it's, it's, it's fascinating and amazing to be in nature when you're traveling so far to go and preach the gospel. So... When we were there, I like to take my family for lunch or a walk at the Kharib Dam itself. And they the, where the dam is where, in the Afrikaans is the Slesa. I keep on forgetting the, the English name. But where they open up the water and the water gushes out when the dam is too full. So you can't stop there because there's a red line. You have to stop far away and then you have to walk there. So what I do is the one time I stop there because there are no cars. There are no people there. There are people, but not a lot. And I stop there just quickly wanting to pick up my son so that they can see over the high wall. So I stopped there and I took out my sons and I said to them, just come quickly. We need to be quick. And Jonathan asked me, why do we need to be quick? I'm like, uh, because daddy can't actually stop here. So as I picked him up, to show him, I could see he was resisting me picking him up. And I'm like, what's going on? He said, no, we can't stop here. The police is going to catch us. We need to leave now. <laughs> That's for him important. Don't compromise standards. Don't compromise. If the red line says don't stop here, you don't stop here. Okay, they can be depressed children, very down children, because they see the glass half empty. When you say something to them, ask them questions, you need to give them time to think. You need to give them details. They need the details. They want to see evidence of your love and what you are doing for them. They unfortunately will remember your faults, what you have done wrong. And when you promise them something, you need to keep to them, to keep to it. Don't tell them you're going to play together. You're going to do something together and then you leave and then you don't play with them. And under tension, this is the greatest evidence that Jesus is not in their heart, is that they will withdraw. And I see it in adults too. As soon as they don't like something, something's not going to the way they understand it, they will withdraw. That's not the way God works. They can be very prepared. They don't like surprises. They are very disciplined. They want to be there for people. So if you've got something you want to do for them, don't surprise them. Tell them before the time so that they can be prepared. They like to be there for people, like my son making the card for the couple at the church. See, he, he will make cards for people at church just randomly, his friends, etc., because he wants to be there for them. They're very careful. 
They're very considerate of other people's feelings. They're very neat and they follow the rules, as I've already explained. So they're good people to play board games with because they will follow the rules. They won't cheat. If you're going to play with a child that is in yellow, you might have to look under the desk, look behind the chair, see what they are doing because they might be cheating. And the red might make it uncomfortable because they have to win and then they get all serious. But they can be very critical. They can be indecisive. They can be too expressive and skeptical of everything around them. So if I were to give them a vehicle, it's a train. Because the train rides upon two perfectly aligned train tracks as they steam forward in life. And then one audience member once said to me, uh, I, it wasn't my words, and they say, and they blow off steam by being critical, telling what's wrong with you. And then another audience member and another different audience said, yes, and they've got baggage. <laughs> it's not my words. But the point is, that's a perfect vehicle for them. Let's get to the last personality, the green personality. For them in life, it's all about let's do it together as a family. Let's just be, oh yes, I didn't ask. So any person in this audience this evening that would say, blue personality, that's my child. Any person would say, blue personality, definitely my daughter, Diana says. And you're, you've got a yellow and a blue. Oh, you've got a colorful, colorful family like mine. Blue and yellow. Anyone else that would say, my child, my child, it's blue. Anyone else? Only one? Can't be just one. They, they're very prominent, especially in our church. Yolandi says, Tim says, Joan, I probably don't know my child. She fits it all so far. So Stephanie says, blue, red, my eldest son. So blue, red, so sensitive person that wants to be in charge. So there are combinations of personalities, as I've explained in the beginning. I don't have the time to go even into that. But that even helps you more to understand your child. But I'm going to tell you at the end of the seminar, stay tuned, how you can have access to more information, where I'm going to explain the combinations. Because the red-blue children, they're extremely confident and extremely intimidating. If the, if the mother is a green and the son is a red-blue, she's going to be extremely afraid to discipline him or to say anything to him. But that's another story. My daughter is blue, says Z, my eldest daughter, that's my wife. <laughs> I didn't ask you your, your spouse, but in any case, that's my wife. I need to study a lot more, says Joan. Yes, praise the Lord. We need to learn a lot more because it does help. Let's get to the green personality. For them, it is let's do it together as a family. That's what they want, togetherness. They find security in their parents and in their siblings. They want togetherness. Their desire in life is just to have peace. These are the children. They're not going to talk back to you. They are not going to tell you what's wrong with you. They are just going to be quiet. These are the extreme introverts of this world. They are quite happy just to stay at home. This is Jacob in the Bible, mommy's boy. Just stayed at home. Not going out hunting with Esau, just staying at home. They are conflict avoiding. The thing they fear most in life is confrontation. So if you raise your voice, if your body language is not what it's supposed to be, if you come home from work and it's got nothing to do with your family, but work has been hard and you're red and you've got a strong and domineering body language when you come into the house, that green is going to shut down and freak out. They hate confrontation. They are peaceful children, extremely peaceful. You almost think that they never do anything wrong. And that's the very thing that we need to focus on when it comes to the green personality. Because you're not going to know actually when they do something wrong. Their greatest need in life is to be respected and have harmony at home. They don't want arguments. They don't want fighting. They just want peace. That's what they desire. But they are not being respected because they are the most bullied children in the world. These are the children that go out and shoot people other children in a school because they've been bullied they've been disrespected their boundaries have been pushed and they these are the children also they watch everything and play video games a lot and then they take that video games out because then they explode one day you can push them very far but one day they explode and they take out the children in the school it's it's crazy it comes down to personality they just want harmony and be respected. So because they're quiet, parents will many times, when they do say something, just override them. 
and not give them an opportunity to actually also have a thought. So you need to give them an opportunity to speak, but they're actually not going to want to speak. So you actually need to ask them, what do you think, my child? What are you feeling? They are not going to want to talk. You need to sit them down and actually say, they are the most difficult. And when I'm going to ask, because I'm explaining it now, you might see it in your child. But if I were to ask anyone to identify a green to me, it would be extremely hard because they don't give you enough, even in adults, because they don't talk. They don't share their feelings. Sorry, I'm just muting everyone there. They're very loyal children. So they will stick by your side even if you are messing up. <laughs> they will stick by your side no matter what. They're extremely loyal. They help others. They love to help others and be there for others. They're like an ambulance. They're just going and helping other people. They're extremely slow. When you ask them to, to, to get dressed, when you ask them to eat, when you do all these things, it is extremely slow. They are very calm children. They don't like making major decisions. So if you're going to ask them, what are you going to study, my child, once you're done with school? They're going to be like, um, um, and three weeks later, you're going to ask them, so what are you going to study? They're still going to be like, um, um, so you need to help them with making major decisions. They don't share their feelings. You. So it's coming back to decisions. You also need to help them to move out of the house because they're not going to move out. They're going to be so calm and peaceful right at home. No, daddy. You're going to ask them when they're 28 years old, son, what's your future? I'm staying right here. Thank you. <laughs> they're not in a hurry to get married, neither. The green men, especially. They're not in a hurry unless they meet the right woman who would 99% of the time be a red and that red would say, hey, pull up your socks. We need to get married. We've been dating for five years. Come on. Because the red wants to get things done, but the green is extremely slow. They don't like to share their feelings. You don't know what's going on in their life. So you need to get it out of them because a part of this life is to understand your child and what makes them happy, what makes them sad so that you can become the parent that God wants you to be and guide them in this life so that they can come become a force for God and his work in this world. They would never want to upset you. So they are not going to try and break rules to upset you. And if they do break the rules, they're not going to tell you because they don't want you to upset. Under tension, and this is evidence that Jesus is not in the heart, they will just submit, even to wrong. Because children will push them at, at school. Let's do this. Let's do that, which is now wrong things. And then they will submit to it to avoid confrontation, to avoid being you know pushed away or being disrespected and they will give in and do it but they will not tell you unless you go and sit them down and ask them they're extremely considerate children they're extremely patient when they speak it's a soft low voice and it's never going to change if you ever listen to a sermon before where a preacher is in front and you're thinking oh, i can't hear what the guy is saying it's not going to change the guy's going to speak with a soft low voice standing still in one place for the rest of his life because he's a green personality they're extremely compliant so they will listen easily they're easy to parent the only difficult part is to understand actually what's going on in their heart because they don't talk but they're easy to parent because they're compliant they want to avoid conflict so you say let's do this and this and they will say yes let's do it but you always need to obviously guide their hearts that it's not just let's do it because i want to avoid confrontation let's do it because it's the right thing to do and jesus wants us to do the right thing they're extremely good at routines and doing repetitive tasks, doing the same thing every day. They are not good necessarily at making up their beds because they get distracted. But they are good at routines. They're extremely consistent, but they can be very stubborn. They can be easily distracted by things. They need to study and then they're doing something else and they get distracted. They are very quiet and shy. They don't like major changes. They don't like to move. They don't like it when you buy new cars every day or every month or every year. They don't like to when you're changing jobs, friends change, school change. They don't like those major changes. They can be very lazy. They come home from school for them. That's work done for the day. Let's watch everything. They love to watch TV and let's play video games or let's read a book. 
but I am done for the day. And they procrastinate. I am going to do this. I've got a desire to do it, but I don't go over in doing it. So, what vehicle would I give them? A boat on a calm lake. No one throwing somersaults in the water. They just got calm and peaceful. Okay, all the people with the green personalities in, in this meeting this evening, please give a thumbs up in the chat. Tell me if that is your child. Desiree says, that's my daughter. Vandana says, that's my husband. Carmen says, that's my child. Yolandi says, a blue-green daughter. So that would be my wife's personality. Very caring about other people, the blue-greens. Diana says, my daughter may be a blue-green, meaning she must be very caring about others, wanting to be there for others. Carly says, yo, my struggle, that's my daughter. Naomi says, that's my daughter. Gail says, I see myself. Judith says, that's my son. Galaxy A32 gives a thumbs up. The Stephanie's green, blue, or green, yellow, my second son. Okay. Pumla says, my firstborn. Delia says, my daughter is a blue green. The blue greens are extremely about other people, being there for people, wanting to be there for people, but can be very misunderstood because they still got blue first. Okay. Okay, so let's talk about two more things. Now that I've explained the personalities, let's talk about how they communicate and how they respond to discipline, what they need from you and what you need to look out for. That's what we're going to end off with. Okay, so the red personalities, how do they communicate? Well, they need from you not to be emotional when you communicate. <laughs> They don't like that. I'm not saying it's always right and you can never be emotional, but they struggle. If mommy comes and talks to a red son or red daughter and mommy's crying, they, they struggle with that emotion, just puts them in a place that they struggle to move forward. They're extremely logical. So when you come and communicate with them, talk about logical things that make sense. And they love to be given choices. Don't tell them you need to do A, you need to just do A. Give them A, B, and C when you communicate with them. They need choices in life. When they communicate, they're very direct and blunt because they don't have a thought process. A, a blue personality thinks things through. They would think, what am I going to say? What shouldn't I say? The red personality don't have a thought process. There are no thoughts to think about. That's Peter in the Bible. The thought comes, I say it. It doesn't mean you can't guard your mouth. You need to guard your mouth, obviously. But there's no thought process, so they can be very direct and direct and blunt. When they talk, they can have one-way conversations, meaning you're not part of the conversation even though you're there. They just want to talk about themselves. And Okay, someone called me by my old, my first name. Ah, that must be one of my friends. How Huawei P30 Lite, who's that? That wrote, thanks, Yapi. That's that's my first name. But everyone calls me Rene that knows me here. I would like to know who's that. I know some of my school friends um, actually said they want to join. That was one of the friends that sent my wife a message from school that wanted to join the seminar. Praise the Lord for that. But obviously that person will send me a private message, then I would know who it is. So they will have one-way conversations, the Reds. They just talk about themselves. They have, you know, the first time my wife and I had, the day the Lord showed me that Chantel was my wife, that's a story on his own, that even, I said to her, can I phone you? And she said, yes. And I spoke to her and we had a long conversation like we knew each other for years. And only to find out later, once we were married, that she told her mother, after this conversation, when her mother asked her, so what was it like? And she just said, he just talks about himself. <laughs> now I understand it because it was a one-way conversation because I need to tell her how good I am because, you know, I'm going to marry you. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just making fun out of it. The point is reds can have one-way conversations. The red child can be very defensive when you are correcting them. And you need to make sure that when you correct them that you address the defensiveness. And they can come over as being very rude, very rude. Okay, so that's the red personality, not emotional, logical choice.
the yellow personality, what they need from you when you communicate. You need to be positive. These are the most positive children in the world. The world ends for all the blue personalities. Life is hard for all the blue personalities, green personalities. The yellow personality, life is fun. Regardless of COVID, regardless of anything else in this world, for the yellow personality, life is positive, life is fun. Okay, they, life, when you address them, when you communicate with them, be friendly, be open, and be simple. Don't make it complicated. If you're going to try and come to them and just tell them this complicated thing that can be so easy to explain, they're going to sit there and they're not going to understand what you're saying. When you communicate with them, be simple. They are extremely optimistic when they communicate. They're always positive, always seeing the bright side of life. The glass is always half full. It's not half empty. They're extremely open. So it's easy. They lie easily, but it's easy to get the truth out of them when you communicate with them. So I would do with my younger son, something would happen and he knows he's in trouble. Then I would ask him, my son, did you do that? He would say no. Then I would just sit him down and say, son, I'm just going to ask you, Tell me the truth. Jesus wants us to tell the truth. The seventh, the ninth commandment says, Thou shalt not lie or bear false witness. Did you do that? And then he would say, Yes, Daddy, I did. Then out of his own, because of the communication, that is the way that he needs. He started praying in his prayer time in the morning. They, my, both my boys, I do worship with them, Bible study, Bible reading, and then they both have to pray on their own. And in the evenings, they get time to pray again. And my youngest son, out of his own, four years old, started asking Jesus, Jesus, please help me not to lie. I didn't ask him to say that. He started praying it out of his own. It's because the communication is in a way that's meaningful and understanding to him. By the way, when I explain these things and when I mention examples of our children, it doesn't mean I'm getting it right all the time. I'm giving you obviously the examples when I do get it right. They're obviously examples where I don't get it right. They also have one-way conversation. They can take the conversation over and just do all the talking. And when you communicate with them, be very vigilant for man manipulation. When they're trying to twist the story so that it suits them when you communicate. The blue children, what they need from you is detailed information. Don't go to them and give them one-liners, bottom line, last sentence, because that's what their red personalities do. Give them the details. Explain it to them. I'm sometimes, let me tell you where I get it wrong. So I'm many times too impatient to give all the details. Now you're thinking, Rene, you're giving us so many details tonight. I know I'm giving you details tonight because I believe this is a passion and something God has called me to. So it's easier to do. But just in one-on-one -on -one conversation, it's not always so easy to give all the details as a red personality that I am. So my son would ask me something, then I will give him a short one sentence answer. And then my wife, the Chantel, the blue personality goes and she would explain from A to Z the thing so that he can understand it. And I'm thinking, yeah, I probably should have done that. That was the right thing to do because they need the details. They need understanding. They need you to acknowledge them. And to actually listen with actually a heart that wants to listen and not on your cell phone in the one hand while they're explaining themselves in the on the other hand they need you to concentrate sometimes i'm working and my son would come and ask me something and you know men can only do one thing at a time actually it's actually been proven no one can do two things at a time your brain can't do it i actually watch a whole video on it it's scientifically proven women just have the ability to concentrate from the one thing to the next but the brain actually makes a shift from the one thing to the other it's not both things at the same time so that's what that's what i mean so i'm sitting here i'm working i'm concentrating and my son asks me something and i'm not hearing or i'm driving and i'm thinking of something else and he's going daddy 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 i'm talking to you he would say that way so then i'm like okay i need to acknowledge i need to listen in this moment for the blue personalities, it's a two-way conversation, not just a one-way conversation. They are great listeners. So when you're explaining something, they would actually sit and listen and want to listen when you communicate with them. They would actually think what they say when they respond to communication. 
They're very sensitive, so think what you say when you communicate with them. But they can also be on their side, as I've explained already, the blue person is be very critical when you communicate. Like that's wrong and that's wrong and that should be done that way. And that's not up to standard and you're not meeting my 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 standards. And it's it, sometimes it can be exhausting. The green personality child. What they need from you is relational focus, meaning when you communicate with them, you're taking relationships into consideration. In your communication, you are letting them know about this relationship or whatever the subject is, but it needs to be relational. So you need to think about what you're going to say before the time, because that actually makes them calm and peaceful and actually feel safe to express their own feelings. When it comes to them, they don't want pressure when you communicate. Don't go to them and to bombard them with, you need to do this. You need to stand up for yourself. Yeah, da, 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 da. And that's not what they need. They don't need pressure from people when they communicate. They are excellent listeners. They're the greatest listeners in the world. They make excellent counselors, especially the counselors that doesn't say much back and just need to listen. They're excellent counselors. They're extremely understanding. They're extremely calm when you communicate. They've got a few words. They don't say much. And when you communicate and ask them questions, etc., they can come over as being very indecisive. Be vigilant of it and approach it appropriately now that you know their personality. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29 says, Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification, that it may impart grace to the hearers. So what I, excuse me, what I communicate need to impart grace to the hearer. And my audience have different hearings. The reds do not hear what the blues hear, even though the same words are coming out of my mouth. And I need to know what they hear. That gives me power to empower my children to be closer to God because daddy and mommy understands me. And then it's much easier to lead your children to the feet of Jesus. And they can become a power force in this world for God. Because what is the goal in the end of the day? To develop their characters, number one, by understanding them. Because I've got a thesis from Andrews University, where, which they wrote a thick document that I read from cover to cover about the personalities. And in that document, they clearly say, and I agree, your personality makes up your characters, who you are. You're impatient, that's your character. You're aggressive, that's your character. You're a leader, that's your character. So this makes up your character, these personalities. So we can guide them by preparing their characters for heaven. And number two, what is the thing we need to do with children? We need to prepare them to become missionaries to reach the lost. That's the gospel. That's what we prepare our children for. Their characters and becoming a missionary for God. You know what it does to my heart and my son that started doing this out of his own? It's because he's exposed to evangelism. He's exposed to missionary work continually. He started praying, my eldest son, six years old, and then my younger son started to follow him. Lord, please help me. Sorry, not that. Lord, give me the words to preach. I'm like, praise the Lord. My son is asking for the words to preach. And God gave him at Wentworth the words. That's God can use children. The Bible says stones will cry out to preach the gospel. Then, let's talk about lastly, discipline. Discipline. I've been busy for an hour. I think we started about quarter past, so I actually went way faster than what I thought. I hope you guys are still tuned in. Normally they say, you know, 45 minutes, then people start tuning you out. So hopefully you guys are still with me and still following. Okay. The red person child, when it comes to discipline, firstly, they're very strong willed. So you need to be stronger. You are really going to have to deal with the strong willed child. They're going to want to have it their own way. When you discipline them, give them choices. When you give your requirements of them, give them choices. It's easier for them to obey you when there are choices. Give them reasons for the discipline. Don't just do it. Explain the discipline. Explain that you, why are you going over into this act of discipline or the, the better word is discipling. Discipling your child's heart back to your to obedience to you and obedience to God. 
Now, obviously, there are different forms of discipline. Explain to them the boundaries. Be consistent in your correction, especially because they're strong-willed. Don't give them their will the one day and the next day you like, no, no, you can't do this. You need to be consistent and give logical consequences. They are logical. They want the choices. They want the boundaries and they need the reasons. So none of my children, I think, has the strongest personality as the red because the one is more yellow, the one is more blue. And then the second for both of them are red. For the sunshine yellow children, they are very impulsive and driven towards pleasure. So you need to disciple them in the lines of, listen, your child, you are going to lean towards pleasure and that which is wrong more easily. So they are going to do more wrong things than any of the personalities. They're going to be more in trouble than any other child of the four personalities. And that's the yellow personality. Warn them against the danger. You have to repeat it. They're yellows. You have to tell them, I expect of you to make up your bed. Then you go and you go and look. And next day you go again and you go again until it sinks in and they start doing it naturally. When you go to them, you can actually focus on the positive, even have some humor when you discipline them. And you're thinking to myself, no, shouldn't I be serious and all that? Just today, my son did something, my youngest son, that needed just a firm voice. That's it. That's the only discipline he needed. When I used the firm voice, he looked at me and I could see, he was like, oh, I did something wrong. I'm sorry. I could see it in his face. And I could feel, I could see that he's, even, even in his face, he's distancing himself from me because now I reprimanded him. Then I remembered the seminar I'm doing this evening. And then I brought in some humor while being serious. And immediately he was open to what I was saying. Immediately he was more open to the fact, you know what, I shouldn't do that again. Be strict when they are lying. Don't let it go the one day and the next day are disciplining it. Be strict with it. Be careful that they will manipulate you to get out of discipline. They would do things and be all lovey-dovey and affectionate to get you away from disciplining them. Take away their social interaction. That's a good way of disciplining a yellow personality. No friends. Take, take away their social interaction. Be then their interaction. Ever thought about that? In disciplining. Take away their interaction. You be then their interaction. You be the one that they long for. You be the social interaction that brings them in line when their heart has drifted to that which is wrong. I'm going to tell you now what we do for disciplining. The cool blues, they are very sensitive and don't like making a mistake. So they already feel bad when they've done something wrong. Use like a stars or a pointing system when it's a younger child, obviously. When it's an older si a child, use something, some form of system that leads them back to what is right. Have consistent rules with them. Don't bend the rules. For them, they want the consistent rules. They are more obedient than any other child. The green personality are more calm and peaceful than any, any other child. But the blue is going to want to do what is right. So when they do what is wrong, for them, it's already hard to have made the mistake. And it doesn't make it doesn't take much for you to disciple this child because they don't want to do what is wrong. They've either been influenced by friends or they've they've just made a silly mistake in the moment. So for them, it's easy. It's my eldest son. It's so easy to get him back into line. So easy. It's the yellows and the reds that's harder. They will easily give in to their feelings. So be attentive to that. They will give in to their feelings and then they will react to it. And you would think it's unlawful behavior. But it doesn't take much to get them back. Once they are acknowledged, once you show that you are their companion, and then they will get back into line. The earth green personality, they don't want to upset you. So either you're not going to know what they do wrong, and this is this point, you wouldn't know. Or when they're just going to avoid doing what is wrong, period. Just stick to the rules because I don't want confrontation. Be calm when you're correcting them. You don't even have to be firm with them. Because when you are too firm, the green personality shut down. 
They're not going to talk. They're not going to say. In their mind, they're somewhere else. They're not listening to you. So be calm when you correct them. Even in your firm voice, be calm. Now, you should always be calm in your firm voice with all personalities, but with them, especially be attentive to being calm. They will submit easily to your correction. Don't ask them a lot of questions. Don't try to analyze the whole thing. Why did you do this? Why did you go? They already don't want to upset you. They already don't want to do what is wrong anymore. They already feel sorry. So don't put them on the spot and bombard them with questions. They will shut down once again. Keep your discipline short when it comes to this child. So whatever the consequences are, whatever you have decided it must be, keep it short. Don't make it a long, drag out thing. It will just push them away and they wouldn't want to be close to you because they hate confrontation. So what do we do as a family? So my wife, we've got smaller children. So we've got a chart in our kitchen. And on this chart, you've got Matthew's name and Jonathan's name on top. And there are levels of discipling. The first level is the green level. You start off with blue, then it's green. Green is warning. So you've woken up this day, you have done something that is worthy of discipline. Depends If it's lying, you go straight to red. Red's the last one. If you're hitting each other, if you're biting, if you're kicking, if anything like that, Praise the Lord, my sons, we, we dealt with that when they were two years old and it's done. We don't have to worry about those things. So when there's those type of things, it's red. There are certain things that just goes down to red immediately. But we start off with green when it's something worthy of discipline, but not worthy of a red discipline. So then it's green. It's your warning. The second one, I think, is orange. Forget the colors. I can't remember the colors. My wife made the chart. The second thing that needs to happen to them, if a second thing happens in the same day, then they need to go and sit in what we call the quiet corner. And in this quiet corner, they've got a chair in our spare bedroom where they go and sit. And we've got a picture of Jesus on the cupboard and a picture of a child praying. And this is where they need to now calm down. Let's say whatever happened, let's say they cried or whatever. They need to calm down. They need to pray. And ask Jesus to come into their heart and help them to be obedient to mommy and daddy. And then they need to sing. Because the Bible teaches that Jesus sang. And singing is important. Then they would start singing so that the air can be lifted in their own heart and the whole atmosphere of the house. Because angels come closer and the evil angels depart when we sing. So then they have to sing. And then mommy would ask them, did you pray? Yes. Did you sing? Yes. Because we will hear them sing, obviously. And then they can come back and say, okay, is your heart now surrendered? And then they would say yes or no. Then the next level. Now, let's say something happens again the same day. Now we take privileges away. Now we pack away toys for the yellow personality. If it's an older child, take away the cell phone or the interaction with other children. Now the discipline goes into that sense. You're taking something away. So that's the next part of the discipline. And then the red, you can decide what that looks like in the end of the day. But then it's the red. Red, you're in trouble. So what you decide in your life what that red looks like, that is up to you. But red, when you get to red, it's trouble. Okay. So that's the parenting, discipling your children, understanding your children's seminar this evening. Now, I did in an hour and a half probably what I would do in two and a half hours normally because there's so much more to give, so much more to share. And the question is, how can you get more access to understanding the different phases of life of your child in their personalities? When it comes to when they're a baby, when they're a toddler, when they're in primary school, when they're a teenager, and when they're then in high in, you know, going out of school. How can you understand the different phases in the personality from baby to teenager and onwards? How can you understand their strong points and where their future is in their life? What they would mean to this world based upon their personality? Who would they look up to based upon their personality? What can you bring into their life that they would actually look up 
the right people and not the sports stars and the music stars of this world, but the right people that will lead them into a higher life. How can you understand the combination of personalities? What if my child is a blue green or a or yellow red or a red yellow? How should you communicate with them based upon those personalities? How to give them commands? So now you're coming to your child, you need to give them a command based upon their personality. How can you approach them that would be more effective? How to listen to them and how to understand their talents and including in this this is an online course our ministry is starting at the end of this month we are launching it online it's going to be absolutely amazing it's going to be a marriage and family online course weekly videos that i'm going to upload both for couples and for parenting and for your health because your health plays an important role if you are healthy because blue personalities tend to be more unhealthy because they are more negative. It influences their body. So there are more sick people in this world. And I've seen it with countless blues that I know, including my wife. And that's why we have studied health and what it means to live a healthy lifestyle. And my wife's got a recipe book out. Praise the Lord for that. A highly professional book. And we're going to, I don't want to miss something. Make sure I mention anything everything and then very important how to connect with God because you need God in this whole process you need God in parenting your children and you need God in your marriage you need God in your health you need God in everything and we are launching it at the end of this month and I'm going to give more details about this in the near future so if you want access to this if you are interested in this just send me an email I'll put my email address again in the group, the chat, sorry, not the group, the chat. And I will give you more details soon. And I'm going to have a live marriage seminar at the end of this month. Thursday night, the 20, let me just look at my calendar. The 28th of July, Thursday night. I'm going to explain the blues and the greens and the reds and the yellows marriage perspective from a marriage perspective. And then on the Sunday night, I'm going to talk about communication. It's a massive challenge in marriages, a massive challenge. The people I do counseling with, I do counseling on Zoom with people. Nine out of 10 times, one of the major issues is communication. So then I'm going to talk about communication that Sunday night and that's free absolutely free three seminars one seminar three sessions in one seminar at the end of this month seats are limited seats are limited if you want to book you guys have first access you tomorrow the advert is going out and it's going to be advertised on youtube worldwide in the youtube ads i've already made the ad i've already got guys in the united states of america a ministry that's working along with our ministry that's going to promote it worldwide so that people can join this online marriage seminar and you are able to join that too and you are first in line. So all you need to do is send me an email and I'll be book your seat tomorrow morning. Tonight's too late to book it, but I'll book it tomorrow morning. Just send me an email at renier at tpministry.org. And then after that, like in the day after that, we are launching this online course We can you understand your child, understand your spouse, connect with God, live a full life in Jesus. It is possible and it's all based upon what God has taught us in the past 12 years. It didn't start all good for us. It was good how God brought us together. But once this blue and red personality came together, man, we had many challenges, many things we had to learn in this life. And that's what we're going to teach you. All my research I'm going to give to you in this online course. Well, that's me for this evening.